Okay, this video is going to show a current project I'm working on. I'm testing a new LCD screen for a project that I'm designing. Um, and uh, this is a uh, very bright, optically bonded touch panel with a 480 by 480 resolution. And I'm interfacing it uh, to an STM32 module here, which is a pretty cool little module. It has the uh, microcontroller, a 32 megabyte SD RAM. It has uh, a large, uh, I believe it's a quad SPI flash, and on the other side it has an SD card. Um, but most importantly, for this particular project, it has a 40 pin FPC connector for hooking up to an LCD. Now, this board was designed with all the pinouts within this panel for a particular display, which I'm not using, I'm using my own or another another party's one. Um, so what I did was came up with using these uh, FPC um, to a regular um, DuPont header and two of these back to back. Um, I have another one that I made that is for like doing a conversion from a 50 pin connector over to a 40 pin. And it's basically just creates like a little patch panel that allows you to reconfigure the pins to suit your needs. Um, so that's how this came about. And um, this is using a 16-bit RGB interface, meaning that we take 16 total bits to define the color of each pixel. So we get so many red, so many green, so many blue. In this case, just for convenience, I actually have the green component of the pixel data going across the green wires, blue across the blue, and the red going across the red. Now there's also control lines in here for running the display itself. And um, what's really cool about this setup, the way that this uh, interface works, is it's using a, a hardware component on the chip here called an LTDC, which is basically a um, display driver uh, piece of hardware. Once you define the parameters for the display and you give the buffer a place on the either on the chip here on the, the chip itself or over here on the uh, SD RAM um, give that buffer a place to live you configure it all defining the pinouts and everything then the actual painting of the display is all done in the background and hardware meaning that your your source code does not have to concern itself with how to get the pixel data from the memory of the microcontroller over to the display. It's like magic <laughs> in a way. So in this case, I have this configured to run this display and automatically paint the display with whatever's in the buffer um, 60 times a second. So that's why we're seeing so such a fast up rate, uh, update rate here. Um, and none of it's being done in software. The only thing being done in software is the actual random pixels that I'm painting to these squares. I think there's like maybe 20 by 20 um, blocks and each one gets a different color. Now, it, when you see it pausing here, that's not a freezing up or anything. That's actually in my code. I'm doing uh, 200 paints, 200 randomizations of these pixels, of these blocks, um, and then I pause for about a second. So when you see the screen go static like it does, that's actually code. That's not a bug or any kind of a glitch or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's really an interesting way to set it up. Um, and usually I'll build all of these things on an acrylic board. Um, this way I can, I can move this board off my workbench and uh, take it with me if I want to go coding. Uh, sometimes I... I'll take my laptop and go off somewhere else and be able to work on a project. So this allows me to pick the whole project and take it with me. The other reason I did it this way is I didn't want to spin up a whole new board um, defining this interface without knowing exactly how it's going to work. When you do that, you incur the time and the expense of making a PC board. And if you get one, one connection wrong, the, the thing will not work. So this allows me to sort out all the nuances of exactly how to interface um, the uh, the hardware and the software to the display um, but it is not like going to the store and buying an HDMI cable or you know uh, 
a VGA cable that's already sorted out and you just plug in from your laptop to your monitor or to your TV. Um, this is a long way from that in complexity. This uh, took me about 40 hours of trial and error. Um, some of the problems are in hardware, getting the, uh, one pin wrong um, can cause you issues. Also, you end up using things like this little box back here. This is a logic analyzer and uh, this allows you to actually see what is going on and there's a lot of data that need to get sent across here just to configure the display before we even start sending it data and I was able to validate all that using that logic analyzer and, and, and ensure that I was sending all the right proper uh, configuration bytes in that. Um, but anyway, that's just a little peek into uh, what goes into building a um, device in a nice color display. I still have the touch panel to uh, sort out and once I get that done then I have a, a, a large bit of work to um, allow a operating system to be able to run on here which would be something called touch GFX which is a uh, basically a graphics processor to create a, uh, a human interface device or a GUI on here which um, will allow me to, to develop an application very quickly. Anyway, there's a little peek into uh, what it takes to get something like this running.